1131, 92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com. Streaming audio live, RTC Channel 5, audio and video. Are we live this morning, Scott? We are. We are on RTC Channel 4, so we welcome everybody to the broadcast. And, of course, if you have a smartphone or a non-exploding Samsung device, you can download <laughs> the TuneIn Radio app and, of course, take us wherever you happen to be going, which today would be... The First Federal Savings Bank, where you would say good morning, President Evan Gottschalk. Hey, Evan. Good morning. Glad to be here. Nice to have you with us. Thank you, Tom, Scott, and thank you all of our loyal live viewers. You bet. And listeners. We can't and forget listeners. the listeners. Thank either. you. That's right. Uh, glad to be here. Um, filling in for Dick Belcher this morning. We got a really good show this morning. Um, we're going to have some some uh, real powerful. Um, sharing of testimony, uh, personal experience a little bit later with one of our guests um, that coincides with uh, breast cancer awareness this month. Okay. So I'm really excited to do that. Yeah, but we might just take a second <clears throat> and mention where Dick is this morning because it's really kind of a cool thing. Yes. Um, remember when Mitch Daniels came yes. to our community a couple of years ago and uh, recognized Dick and Suzanne Belcher for their donation? Right. They, they uh, endowed a chair for green agriculture at Purdue and they're naming uh, the first professor for that today. Outstanding. Um, in a little ceremony. So Good. Dick is there this morning, and uh, I'm sure he and Suzanne are both very proud of, of that. So exactly. big moment for the Belcher family. You bet. All right, well, we are going to be speaking with uh, Greg Dakota from Woodlawn Hospital uh, about Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and then um, also Jane Smiley will be sharing with us okay. um, Good. about her personal story. So. We'll be doing that here in just a few minutes, and we appreciate them being here this morning. All right, uh, some big news this week. Big. Bob Dylan. Ah, yes, that was cool. Did you read that? Yeah, that was yeah. really cool. Yeah, it was. Nobel Prize in Literature. Yeah, well deserved. For his songwriting. Yeah, I, I like thought that. that was amazing. And uh, we all know a lot of his songs, and um, maybe that's what we should pick for our intro <laughs> song. Oh, <laughs> we should have today. That's right. We'll mix that up. But that's a really neat award and well deserved, and he's still writing music now. And touring around, so a big impact on um, United States culture. Also, in the music industry, Chuck Berry is turning 90 years old this month. Remember Chuck Berry, Tom? Finally. Yeah. <laughs> the I guy mean, inspired really? the Beatles, for gosh sakes. I know, yeah, but he, he had some other issues too. <laughs> so, uh, rumor has it that I read about this the other day. Um, Mick Jagger saw Keith Richards holding a Chuck Berry album at a railway station in England. That's how they met. And then that's what uh, ended up starting the Rolling Stones. So he also had an impact. Uh, big hit last weekend with the Chili Cook-Off and Red Hot, Red Hot Car Show. Huge event. Um, Matt Strader delivered on the weather. So uh, that was great. I, I, I decided to take my four kids, Tom, and... I was doing really well, yeah. walking across yeah. from the county building into mm -hmm. the courthouse area, and then I noticed my my almost three year old had a stick in her hand approaching one of the cars. <laughs> <laughs> panic! That's moment. a moment of panic. Oh isn't my it? gosh! Yeah, thankfully, you know, I still got some swift moves when I need to, but uh, we avoided some real disaster there. Did a little education before we proceeded right. to the rest of the vehicles. Um, also, uh, didn't get any chili because it's tough to stand in line with, with yeah, all the is. kids. And I wasn't sure they would do, deal well with the spice, but we had several hot dogs and all the other. Yeah, that'll work. Um, the, all the, the other good It was a great day, event. great crowd. Um, yes. Uh, what a tremendous one day event for our community. Yep. And there's always good spirits. Uh, everybody's exactly. really excited to be there. The weather was wonderful, like I mentioned. A lot of cars, a lot of neat cars uh, were out there. So. Uh, just a great partnership that goes on for that. And then I, I think, you know, the city, like we mentioned last week, the Chamber, City Departments, Blacktop Cruisers all did a great job exactly coming together for that. So, I mean, I just appreciate all the volunteer work that goes into that um, fundraiser. Okay, a little trivia this morning. I'm ready. You'll probably know this, but I'm not going to give you multiple choices. Yeah, Greg and Jane will know it if I don't know it. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> See a sharp look in the eye there. Yeah. Um, it's better than a sharp stick. That's right. Yeah. The Cubs are in the NLCS for the third time since 2000, which is kind of hard to believe. What are the two teams that they played prior to this year, and what were the years? 
Why, why Greg, don't you make it difficult? Greg's got to be dumb. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jane, you might know this. Can I Google it? Uh, <laughs> you probably could Google it. Yeah. Quick answers. Okay, we can talk about that later. Good. I may have a bonus question just to All right. give you a chance for redemption. Okay, uh, we were talking about this a little this morning before we came on live uh, to the air, but I think the nation's running on fumes a little bit here Friday of this week. Uh, especially in the Midwest, because there were two excellent late-night games between the Cubs and Giants. <laughs> <laughs> that probably a lot of people didn't actually see the end to those games, but they were trying real hard. Uh, but I, I think business productivity in the Midwest is <laughs> severely down uh, late this week. We'll see how everybody finishes out Friday. Um, of course, we're expecting big things at First Federal, but we had a couple, a few employees that are pretty die-hard, uh, died-in-the-wool Cubs fans, and. They last. They outlasted the time <laughs> element. It. Yeah, they, they made, made it. it. Okay, you mentioned it earlier, Tom. Boy, you're really you're really up on the news. <laughs> I got to give it to you. The Samsung Galaxy <laughs> Note 7 debacle. They're thinking this may be a three billion dollar hit to Samsung, which is of course a, a it just gets huge worse. global organization. It just yeah. keeps getting worse. It's hard to imagine how this came to uh, be. What are the spin doctors? Where 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 are those guys? are trying to fix this thing. It's it, it just. They've moved on. It continually spirals down. <laughs> it does. Now, I think they, I read, also read they're sending some fire safety gear to you if you're going ah, to try to turn, turn the thing back yeah, in because good, good. there's some, you can see some videos out there too of some exploding devices. But, but UPS and FedEx and I think the Postal Service, they're not hauling them anymore, right? Why would you? Yeah, I know. Yeah, really? They ask you when you go just to send some right, cookies or something right. if you have a, Yeah, You got one? Uh, no. You, anybody got one? My wife had Okay, there you go. That's, that's Yeah, I turned it in Tuesday. <laughs> Did you? Okay. Oh boy, Greg. Yeah, Apple's share price is going up. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> oh, that's, that's challenging. Well, hopefully, I've got a couple of Samsung TVs, so hopefully those are <laughs> We're wearing, making the kids well, wear Samsung protective is, They are big now. in the appliance business. They are. Huge Washers, company. dryers, refrigerators. And they've had a, you know, they've had a good quality record right. over the years too so you know this is probably a, a one-time thing but what a major major thing you just don't hear about a product failing so gloriously <laughs> gloriously I guess you could like say <laughs> <laughs> it kind of flamed out uh, yeah uh, that's good okay uh, let's talk about first federal for just a second uh, we're of course open till five on Fridays so come see us we got an extra hour of our um, lobby being open but if you're looking for a mortgage, you can always get Ben or John to uh, meet with you um, in the evenings or mornings or any time, really. And so you can give them a call and set up an appointment that fits for you. We're also open tomorrow from 8.30 to noon on Saturday. And our ATM is always open to get some cash or deposit some cash and get some instant credit for that. And you can bank with us anytime online and with our mobile app. And we were actually closed uh, this Monday for Columbus Day. Uh, which we've been doing the last four years for our all-employee training and we end up having about 160 First Federal family members at Geneva Center. We really enjoy that facility uh, here in the county and uh, it's our 50th year so we we're hoping to have a pretty fun event which we did and we ended up getting a big group shot. Mike Kinney came out and took a big picture <laughs> of great. all the employees so we were trying to, we were hoping that everyone would be looking at the camera at the same time. It was a lot to coordinate. But we got to get together and share about the past, present, and future with the, the whole First Federal family uh, from around northern Indiana. So we had a great time with that. As you know, we're mortgage loan specialists featuring local loan servicing. That's getting harder to find. So um, we take a lot of pride in, in always maintaining our expert Inform, uh, knowledge and information about mortgage lending and home lending. So if you have some questions about that, we'd love to talk with you and find out um, kind of what, what you're thinking about and maybe help you by asking some questions, help you find out what you want to do there. So please give us a call. Um, we're doing a little product highlight here. Uh, you ever heard about our Go Green checking account, Tom? I have. Okay, we launched this product in 2008 when we opened our green energy branch in Mishawaka. And uh, the product has some features um, that we ask you to adopt and then we give you some, some premium. So it's a green account because if you use e-statements and get direct deposit using some electronic services, then we will give you 20 cents every time you use your debit card to buy something. 
And then we also um, will refund ATM fees if you go to another bank's ATM. They're free for our bank's ATM, which we've got seven of those around. But if you're somewhere else and, and not near one of ours, we'll refund your ATM fees that month, um, uh, unlimited. Excellent. Uh, anywhere you want to use use that. So makes it a little easier to travel around and get cash um, without it costing you. So. We like this account a lot. It's been very pop popular. Um, if you don't have direct deposit, you could set up an auto pay through the account or do some bill pay, and that'll also qualify you for the ATM refunds or the 20 cents every time you swipe your debit card. Well, I shouldn't say swipe necessarily because you can jam you can, it in there that's now right, for you the can chip. chip it. So chip it. it could be either way. Uh, we'll pay the 20 cents. <coughs> All right. Um, of course, if you're looking for a loan, all borrowers have to meet underwriting guidelines, so we do take a look at your current uh, financial situation to help with that. There may be a delivery fee to get a fixed rate loan that's applicable to the mortgage. We are FDIC insured and equal housing lender, and our NMLS number is 399927. By the way, Jane, if you take your dogs through the drive through at First Federal, they get a treat. That's right. Yeah, they do. It's a very nice thing. We, we like to uh, yeah. reward the entire family. <laughs> <laughs> That's very nice. Even you. furry kids. <laughs> okay, well, as I mentioned, we, we've got uh, Greg Dakota from Woodlawn Hospital here with us and Jane Smiley. And uh, we're recognizing Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, big event um, everywhere. You'll see the, the pink colors that help, uh, help us keep our awareness up for that around. Um, all over, sporting events, um, flags, all kinds of colors in different communities. Um, and so I'm going to take a moment and uh, talk about what Woodlawn Hospital is doing for breast cancer awareness. So Greg, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. So what's going on at Woodlawn? Uh, uh, what uh, kind of things are, are happening for breast cancer awareness this month? Um, Nothing's more special than we do throughout the year, to be honest. That's important um, to know. Other than things like this, just raising awareness. Um, uh, we have a few little goodies for our, our patients that come in, but um, you know, breast can or breast screening is very important, um, especially you know early on, so you can catch the cancer early. What kind of what kind of age range is a good idea to start looking at that? The ACR recommends and the FDA recommends starting at age 40 that a woman has a yearly screening mammogram, and of course you can go from there and and you know you always want to communicate with your physician, do yourself breast exams prior to that, uh, and then uh, like I said, just catching some stuff early is very very important in the process of cures. The earlier the better probably for treatment if something's identified? Yes. yes so. Okay. So do you see kind of an increase this month in screenings just because of the awareness or is this something that year round you've got a pretty steady? Uh, we have a pretty steady but normally we do see an increase this time of the year and towards the end of the year. Um, not only because of the awareness, but you know, people getting it in before the end of the year. Um, once you're established as a screener patient, then usually you're on that yearly cycle for that same month or time frame. So, well, do you ever hear a reason why, if so, you're talking to someone that's come in, maybe why they didn't come in at age 40 or have delayed it? Is it something that's scary or uh, painful at all? A variety of reasons. Sometimes it's anxiety. Sometimes it's um, just forgetting that you know you get busy in your daily life. And you don't think about those things, um, and that's where the awareness really comes in. Is just reminding people that you know you really need to look at getting this done. So. Greg, are, are methods of detection getting better? Uh, so mammogram and mammography is okay. still the primary source and the most reliable source for early detection and screening purposes. Um, they're always, you know, looking for more <coughs> technology and different things. Sure. Uh, a lot of those technologies have to do with after they find something, how to better uh, classify okay. it, and, you know, decide exactly what's going on, the best treatment options. And. Uh, what exactly is involved with a mammogram? There's probably quite a few folks that don't really know what that is. They've just heard the term. Uh, mammogram is a 
x-ray of okay. the breast, okay. basically, so it does use some, some radiation. Um, we use digital technology at Woodlawn, as most places do, to be honest, anymore these days. Um, so the female will come in, they'll be asked a, quite a list of questions and get a historical background, family history, and those type of things. Um, and then for the procedure is performed by female, of course, but there is a, a little bit of level of discomfort with it as we have to kind of spread the tissue out and compress things um, to get the good image. Usually it takes about 20 minutes. Okay, that's not long. Hour, so. Great, well thank you for coming in to explain that for us a little bit, Greg. To get an appointment, just give me a call, Greg. Yeah, you just can call, call the hospital, hospital basically. Okay. Uh, 574 224 1151 schedule okay. appointment. Or they are also offered at Fulton County Medical Clinic, and that's 574 223 4337. Do you need a doctor's referral? Not for a screening mammogram. Okay. We do need a physician that we can send the results to that you're following up sure. with. Um, so the results aren't instant. No, they're not instant. The images are reviewed by a board-certified radiologist and, and studied, and they go through a computer detection system as well. Um, and then those results are forwarded to your physician. You will normally receive a letter from us indicating that kind of what the results were, whether they were positive findings or not, and things you need to follow up on. So uh, we try to make sure that our patients are informed of what they need to do next. Excellent. Sounds like good communication. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Greg. It's been a great uh, pleasure having you. We'd like to talk with Jane Smiley now. Jane, I understand you've got some uh, personal history with uh, breast cancer, uh, breast cancer screening. We'd love to hear a little bit about kind of your story and your experience this morning. Okay. First of all, I want to thank Deb Paxton. My daughter works with her at Woodland Hospital, and she asked Jamie if she thought that I would want to do this today. And I was all for talking about breast cancer, as hard as it is. I went home and went to bed that night and cried for about an hour, <laughs> talking about th thinking about things I was gonna say today. But I do wish with on hospital, they used to, in October, have a great big ad in the paper that for breast cancer awareness, and they advertised a mammogram and screening for I, th I can't remember if it was $89 or $98. And in November, October of 2009, 2009, I had scheduled one of those, and I was one of the late people to schedule one. And um, she said they were pretty full, but they'd go ahead and take me, which I'm very thankful for. And um, I had woke up then one morning, I was in a towel from the shower, and my husband asked me if I had a, he said, is that a lump on your breast? And I was like, well, I don't think so. I said, but you know, I've got this appointment scheduled. It was October, 2009 for, um, with on hospital to have a mammogram. And I said, sure, it's nothing. So I went to that appointment and I got a letter in the mail saying that they found abnormalities. And I, I owe my life to Woodlawn hospital and my husband, to tell you the truth. And um, at the time, they, they said they wanted me to come back in for more screenings, and I decided to go to Indianapolis because that's where my family was, because I knew I'd, I'd probably be facing surgery. So um, in November 2009, I was on my way to my son's basketball game, and my surgeon called Dr. Longmire Cook, who I owe my life to. Um, called to tell me that I had stage two invasive ductal carcinoma. I've never said it. I just called him yesterday to ask him what it was because wow. I, it was something I wanted to put behind me. It doesn't sound good. That. No. No. So she said, there's a good kind of cancer and there's a bad kind of cancer. And I want you to know if you're going to have one, you have the good kind and it's the one to have. So I went through four cycles of chemo. I had it on Wednesday. I had it on Wednesday or Tuesdays, and my day off was on Thursday. On Wednesday, I'd have a good day. On Thursday, I'd have a really, really, really rough day. And on Friday, I'd come back to work. And I, I can't say enough for working 
why you're going through this because it helps keep your mind off of it no matter how bad you feel. Um, Jane, how long is a cycle of chemo? How long, how long does it take? Yeah. It pretty much takes your whole day because it's just like a an IV and you sit in a room with a bunch of people that are having it. It's extremely stressful but it's not sure. painful. So I ended up losing my hair, my eyebrows, my eyelashes, and it was tough. I went through 30 rounds of radiation, four um, boosters. I did that in Logansport. First of all, I want to say my um, chemo doctor is Dr. Hardwood in Logansport, and they are fabulous. At the time, I didn't even know that Woodlawn did chemo, but they do. Um, I went through 34 radiation treatments, 30 regular, four boosters in Logansport also with Dr. Marvel, and they, they are amazing people. And that was stressful. But it was painless, and a lot of people it makes tired, but Mark went was with me every minute when I had it, and then I finally told him to just stay here and do what he had to do, because I knew he was busy, and I drove down by myself, had my radiation, went to work. So, I can't say enough for caregivers. You know, caregivers, your family. It's as tough on them as it is on you. There wasn't a day that went by that Mark Smiley did not tell me I was beautiful. <laughs> and that meant a lot to That's me. That's so important. We're speaking with Jane Smiley this morning and she's sharing her story about breast cancer, a very personal story. We appreciate your courage this morning to share that with us. Thanks. On April 8th, I had a lumpectomy. And on May 3rd, I had another lumpectomy because they told me that they didn't have clean margins. And again, she called me when I was at a one of my son's basketball games. I handed it to my kids. I went to all their sporting events. No matter, you know, my son had me walking with him, you know, even though I, I thought he'd be embarrassed because I didn't have any hair and stuff like that. But my kids wanted me at all their sporting events and it helped me get through it as well. But now I'm good. It's good. been six years, and I'm very thankful for all my doctors. And I, I do want to say, first person in town that um, reached out to me, it was Marilyn Fritz. And she herself had breast cancer, and she was one of the first people that reached out to me. And unfortunately, she passed away of cancer. So, And as far as 40 goes on mammograms, I, I think that's just way too old because when I was having chemo, there was a young girl from Logansport in there that was 23 years old that had breast cancer and it wasn't caught in time and she didn't survive. So I, I just wanna tell everybody to have their mammograms. I have license plates. One says one of eight because one out of eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer. I have one that says ma'am, just because I want people to know it's a breast cancer plate and to encourage them to have their um, mammograms. I wear shirts, my shoes have breast cancer on them. <laughs> I just want people to get their attention and schedule their mammograms. Jane, you still get checked on an annual basis? I do, okay. and I'm so excited because I, I was, I've been going every six months. Okay. And this year, my surgeon told me I don't have to come for another year and just this last month I was at my oncologist and he told me to have a great year so <laughs> I don't have to go back Good. to him for another year and that, yeah. that's, that was very exciting. Yes, very encouraging. So. Back, back to the very beginning of this conversation though, that's finding it in time so that you can do something about it. You know, that's that early detection that, that you mentioned right at the beginning. Correct, correct. And as Jane indicated, the age 40 um, is kind of for the healthy, non-symptomatic right. patient. It is very important that you do communicate with your physician um, up until then, because depending on your family history or issues you may be having, definitely those things need to be addressed before age 40. So, so there may be some heredity to this as well, Greg? Yes, there definitely is. So family history, a lot of times those patients with that will start their screening process much earlier than okay. 40. So it is very important to 
have those communications with your physician or your health care provider and make sure that you're on the right track for you. I do have one sure. other thing to say, a couple things. Um, a lot of people say too that you don't need to have screenings when you're elderly, the elderly doesn't. But my mother, she got diagnosed, I think, at 87 years old. Wow. And the same year, I think my niece got diagnosed at 40 years old, in the four, early 40s. Large spectrum. Yes. Yes. But I do have something funny to say when my son, when, I mean, there's nothing that is much harder than telling your children you have cancer. My son, Marcus, asked me, he, could, he first asked me if I was going to die, and I said, well, I was going to do my damnedest not to die. <laughs> and um, the next question, or the next thing he said was, man, this is going to cost a lot of money. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> <laughs> but it's worth it. It is Absolutely. worth it. Yes, it is worth it. Well, what a great, great story. And thank you again, Jane, for coming in to share that. Uh, it's important for all of us to hear a personal story like this. And I know you know a lot of people in our community and will, should have a big impact for everyone to consider and make sure they're um, being aware of this, keeping their mind on it, and, and looking out for it. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for doing this. Greg, thanks for all the information about um, mammograms and screening and trying to be proactive about this problem. Thank you. Maybe we should make the point too, Evan, it, just because October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month doesn't necessarily mean that it shuts off as of Absolutely. October 31st, you know. And Greg kind of made that point when yeah. we were talking this morning. Exactly. This is a this is a 12 month right. of the year yeah. issue that really needs the awareness. Exactly. That's a good point, Tom. Yeah. But, you know, I am thankful for Breast Cancer Awareness Month because I think it has raised a lot of awareness. I see it in multiple generations. Um, I have a nine year old who plays football and throughout the year his grandmother's a survivor and you know he wears his pink socks and pink wristbands and you know for <laughs> little great. kids to be a, well aware of it and it becoming more of a part of their life yeah. is very important yeah. so I think the goal is being met great well thank, thank you, so, you much so much for joining us we really appreciate it all right, uh, I'll give you a quick chance on this trivia, Tom. Make it quick. Craig and Jane, feel free to jump in. Yeah. So the Cubs are in the National League Championship Series for the third time. What are the two teams they played, and what were the years? Do you know, Greg? I don't know. Do you know, Scotty? Atlanta? Was no, they Louis? did beat Atlanta um, in the Division Series um, in one of these years. Okay. Padres, one of them? No. 2003, the Florida Marlins, the Bartman game. Do you remember that game six? Um, the Cubs' best pitcher, Mark Pryor, was on the mound, and that didn't turn out well. <laughs> and then last year, they were playing the Mets. So uh, they've, they've had something going here because they're in it for a second year in a row. All right, uh, quick uh, other trivia. Do you know the goat's name that the curse was based on? No. Murphy. Murphy? And the ivy, the bleachers, and the scoreboard... <laughs> All came to be in 1937, the same year at Wrigley Field. When the lights come in, Evan. Uh, I think it was 1988 <laughs> was the first game under lights. Don't ask me any more questions. <laughs> Touche. Okay, here's the words of wisdom to take with you today. Don't ever permit the pressure to exceed the pleasure. And that was Cubs manager Joe Madden at his introductory <laughs> press conference in 2014. Well said. Evan Gottschalk, thank you very much. Jay, Greg, thank you very much thank for being you, here in the first federal program. Thank you. thank you. A lot has changed since 1966, but your local banking partner, First Federal Savings Bank, hasn't. We've evolved. By combining today's technology with our timeless service to make banking more convenient and enjoyable. At First Federal, we believe in the best way forward is to continue treating customers like family. The dedicated service of our First Federal family members and the support of our wonderful communities keep us going. As I've said for 50 years, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best.